Hello everyone, Nora here. I hope you are having a beautiful day, creating a beautiful day from wherever you are. I'm here in sunny Arizona and I'm really enjoying this lead up post new moon in Gemini as we are about midway between the new moon and the first quarter moon. I'm really enjoying this time. Maybe if you're popping in now, if you're watching live or on the replay, let me know how the recent new moon in Gemini was for you. I heard somebody say, and it was really funny, um, that every new moon reminded her of the Game of Thrones uh, long winter energy. And the phrase specifically for the night is dark and full of terror. <laughs> I think it is something like that. And I personally really felt that over this uh, recent new moon in that there were a lot of uncertainties and unknowns. And um, I had a family member who had a really long labor and um, had a baby. So it was really exciting, but also mysterious and uncertain. And it was right on the new moon when she had her baby. Um, so there was a lot of unknown and, and, you know, that natural fear when somebody's going through a really intense physical initiation like that. Um, but then there were other things like life, just life curiosity things. I'm going through a time where I'm trying to simplify everything that I do, simplify my work and my business, um, how I'm showing up in service in the world, how I parent, just how I live everything. And I feel like that's very in alignment with the North Node in Taurus. And so as I'm simplifying, the pathway is a little bit like Marie Kondo-esque. Like if it's not sparking joy, get rid of it, check it. And that's also very South Node in Scorpio. It's really saying all the things that you don't need. So for me, it's, it's simplifying um, my day to day. But at the same time, I've been feeling this like slight fear around like, well, I, I held on to this thing or I held on to this idea because I thought that I needed it. I thought that it was going to benefit me in the work that I was doing or in, in my work with clients, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and like the fear came up around letting go, which was surprising. And so around the new moon, I felt a lot of this like catastrophizing energy, like, oh no, if I don't send an email out to my mailing list every week, are people going to not want to listen to me? Oh no, if I send out two emails per week, are people going to think that's too much? Like all these fear things, like of essentially of people not liking what I do, right? Like that's a, a very much a, a fear response, which I can imagine if you're a healer, if you do any sort of work in service, um, any sort of leadership, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's this this fear sometimes to to perform or to be all that you can possibly be to serve people. And I kind of view it as like the out of control healer archetype. So I'm personally working with that and, and toning down everywhere that I feel I'm doing more than I need to. So doing less is, is really the strategy for me right now, but then also witnessing all the fears that come up around that. So that was my new moon and Gemini experience. And, and now a couple days after that, I'm feeling a lot more hopeful, optimistic, like whew, I went through the fear and now I'm feeling really good about it, feeling really good about my choices. So what came up for you around May 30th? Um, even the next day, June, June where was it? May 31st. Yeah, we had 31 days in May. So May 30th, May 31st, June 1st, that was very much new moon territory. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining. Um, what were the things that you felt like maybe you had to release? Because a lot of times, both around the new moon and the full moon, the, they tend to be release times. Um, but the new moon, a lot of it is making space for the new that wants to come in. And so you might even feel it a little bit before the new moon. So maybe around the, the 28th, 29th of May, really starting to let go of things. Maybe on the 30th, almost sitting with the emptiness, sitting with the emptiness of like, okay, well, if I let go of all of these things, what do I have left? Who am I when I let go of the things that I think I have to do or the way that I think I have to be or the way that I feel like I have to show up in the world? What's that true essence that I'm left with when I let go of all of that stuff? And that's what I think the full, the, the full moon is actually in a couple weeks going to show us, oh, this is a new way you can see yourself. This is the full culmination. Now that you've let go what was limiting you. Now this is how you get to show up in a new type of fullness. So we're kind of um, approaching this, the first quarter moon next week, it'll be June 7th. We also have 
Vestalia coming up, which I'm feeling really excited about. And it's beginning June 7th and goes until June 15th. It happens every year from June 7th to 15th. This is an ancient Roman holiday where they would be in devotion to the goddess asteroid of devotion, who is Vesta. She's the goddess asteroid of sacred service and, and what we make sacred. And it's really cool that this year, June 7th, Vestalia, the opening portal of this week-long celebration is coinciding with the first quarter moon in Virgo. This is really cool because Vesta has a natural rulership and very strong affinity with the archetype of Virgo, Virgo being the priestess, the virgin, uh, the one who is sovereign unto herself. So there's a lot of this sovereignty, independence, being able to make your own choices kind of energy. And then in as we kind of frame this within this new moon cycle of Gemini, where we're really exploring the nature of duality, um, what comes up for you around that? What is it that you are making sacred? What is it that is so important to you that it makes sense to cut out all the other things? It makes sense to cut out the distractions or all the extra stuff on our to-do list, our busy work that is not actually needed. This is, I think, very much a cutting away time. There's a practice um, in, in different forms of yoga and Buddhism, and it's neti neti, not this, not this, not this, not this. You, you just keep walking around <laughs> and, and almost having this relationship with everything in life. And you're really asking in yourself, is this for me or is this not for me? Which is very much a Virgo question. And you almost often get to this place of like, no, I don't actually need this. I don't need this belief. I don't need this thought. I don't need this material attachment. I don't need this thing that I thought I needed to be comfortable. I don't need this position. I don't need this role. I don't need this status, right? So there's a lot of this separating the wheat from the chaff, um, really whittling down to what is most needed and understanding that that's also going to help us simplify North Node in Taurus, so that we can really align with our core values, which is a Taurian endeavor. So I'm going to read some of these comments here. I see um, some ups and downs. Um, somebody says the new moon day was an extreme high that hopefully leads to a big new future. Yeah, I really feel that every new moon, it's new moon, new me. I'm planting my seeds. New, me, new moon, new me, new energy. That's actually a line from a Fia song called New Moon, which I highly recommend if you haven't heard it. And since we're still in that new moon energy, that instinctual emergence, we're still like a, a fertile field being seeded. So right now where you are, um, what can you receive or what are you receiving? What is the message that is being downloaded to you around what new directions do you get to take? I also see a comment saying, I have felt things shift forward in release, but still detecting stagnation, maybe just struggling with the residual emptiness. Yeah, oh, I feel that too. Um, stagnation is a big word for sure. And I do feel like with the fixed uh, polarity of Taurus Scorpio, that's actually the shadow of both sides. It's the shadow of the whole axis of Taurus Scorpio is stagnation. Because if we are too much on the Taurus side, we're too much in the physical, we tend to stagnate because we're overly attached to the material world. And we believe that that's all that can bring us comfort, joy. We might stay in our comfort zone, which is very much the shadow of Taurus. But on the other hand, this, the way we can stagnate with Scorpio is by stagnating emotions. So maybe we're repressing emotions, stuffing them down. So they're staying down deep in the shadow bag and they're stagnating down there. That's one way. Another way, I think we can also be stagnant in perpetual crisis, like keep reliving the same old story, the same old loop, the same old lie, the same old trauma over and over and over again. And it creates almost like a, a looped stagnancy. That is what I think happens with the South Node in Scorpio. So essentially, to remedy both sides, we want to really come into the present moment. We really want to be asking in this moment, do I need this? Do I need this story? Do I need this justification? Do I need this thing? Why is it more of a asking from a place of just loving curiosity? Why is it that I feel like I need this thing? Or why is it that I feel like I need this story? Why, why is it that I need this to be part of my identity? Yes, uh, drop all that which you are not, Nisargadatta. Yes, I think that might have been what I was 
aiming for. <laughs> so thank you for dropping that into the comments. Um, so as we approach this first quarter moon next week, June 7th in Virgo, this will be at 16 degrees of Virgo. And this is a degree point that's actually happening with a couple different transits as we come up into the coming weeks. So to start uh, June 6th, we're going to have Pallas Athene conjunct Uranus at 16 degrees of Taurus. And then Saturday, June 11th, we will have Venus conjunct Uranus at 16 degrees Taurus, both at that same degree point. There will be some minutes shifted for the, the, the Venus Uranus conjunction, but both at the same degree point, which is a Cancerian degree, which is the energy of nourishment, um, what we're taking into our body, um, how we're feeding ourselves. And this can be physically, but also on the soul level. So there's with these three different transits. So the Pallas Athene Uranus conjunction, the first quarter moon at 16 degrees Virgo, and then that Venus Uranus conjunction at 16 degrees Taurus, all 16 degrees. And according to degree theory, 16 degrees is associated with cancer. We have a lot of energy really culminating around the question of how am I feeding myself and is it serving me? Am I caring for myself in a way that is truly benefiting me? Am I putting my energy and my attention on the the activities, the, the, the thought patterns, the conversations that are really serving me so that I can serve. Um, and I have a feeling if you're here, if you resonate at all with what I talk about, you are in some way, shape or form um, on a path of service or a healer. And so it all comes back down to that. Like, why do we even do what we do? Why do you show up in the spaces that you show up in? There's a really great practice that you might all like to try. And basically on a piece of paper, you draw a circle pretty big size, like, um, you know, at least like a, a third of the page, right? And inside that circle, you draw, you write out what you can control about what it is that you're trying to create or how you are trying to affect change in the world, right? Because if you're a healer or you're on a service path, you're typically trying to be a change maker or you just are a change maker, right? Like just by your very essence, your very way of being, you are a change maker. So sometimes when we're on the change maker path, or maybe you're a light worker, a rainbow warrior, there's lots of different ways to describe this um, identity, but we tend to take on a lot. <laughs> there's this trend of taking on the burdens of the world, right? Very Pluto and Capricorn, um, very Neptune and Pisces, like, whoa, the whole world, everything that's going on in the world, so much suffering, it's so heavy, I gotta fix it all. That tends to be the shadow of the out of control healer. And I think one of the best ways to remedy this is do this activity where you write inside the circle everything that you can control, everything that you can influence. And then on the outside of the circle, everything that you cannot influence, everything that's simply out of your control. And then plan your life, strategize your life around what's on the inside of the circle, around what you can influence. And with this 16 degrees popping up all over the place, to me, it sounds like the, the emphasis in this coming week is on what you're taking in, what you're consuming, what you're receiving, what you're bringing into your body, bringing into your aura, bringing into your space, cultivating in your relationships. Oh, oh gosh, yes. <laughs> the storytelling in mainstream culture, society, same old story being told over and over again, especially in movies. Yeah, and I think it's what contributes to you know, hypnosis <laughs> and um, illusion, which we're all collectively working through with this Neptune and Pisces. Also, on the note of Vestalia, this is really cool because she's going to be in Pisces during this season. So between four and five degrees of Pisces is where she is right now. So you'll want to know where she, that is in your charts. And also, you can compare where currently transiting Vesta is in relation to your natal Vesta. And this will give you a lot of information on the overlap of the path of sacred service that's opening up before you right now. Because the natal chart is always there for you. That is always your foundation. But you can also layer what's going on right now to kind of see, oh, well, there are many expressions of, say, your natal Vesta placement. But if you layer the Pisces on top of that, it's going to give you a different flavor. And it's going to almost show you, oh, OK, this one, like focus on this path, this this path of perhaps loving compassion, surrender, forgiveness, peace, um, all these Piscean themes, inner peace, most of all. There's a, a quote from A Course in Miracles, and it says, to heal is to make happy. 
And I really love that because especially with all the stories in the in our mainstream culture around what it is to heal, we tend to have really limiting ideas about what that is. But I think in a lot of cases, if you come with the intention of I'm just here to show up, reflect and serve in the highest way that I possibly can to, to bring some joy, to spark some joy, to remind people to love themselves, to, to help people to become happier than I did my work, than I did my job, then I am a healer, right? So there's so many different ways to be a healer. But I think that's the, the Piscean message is it's actually very simple. It's, it's really just presence and love. And I think that's what the, the Vestalia festival is really all about. Um, how to make sacred. And we can do that by really honoring where Vesta is right now. So since Vesta is the goddess of the hearth, she's the keeper of the sacred flame. Maybe for that whole week, you're doing something where you're keeping a candle lit, um, or maybe you have ritual candle lightings where you're meditating with the candle, meditating with the flame. It's said that Vesta um, embodies the flame. She is one with the flame. Um, really connecting with all the metaphor there and, and fire element energy. And what does fire do for you in your life? How do you connect with the sacred fire? What does it mean um, in terms of sacred service? There's a lot that we could reflect on here and meditate with. Also, I have this cute little broom. This is a really good time, it is said, to buy a new broom or make a new broom. I don't know how crafty you are, but if you like to make brooms. <laughs> it's a great time to make one. Hello. Thank you for being here. Um, and clean your whole house with it. And what you want to do is, you know, sage the broom and maybe bathe it in, in some, some sea salt water, healing salt water, and, and do that in your whole house. This is a really important time for purification and cleansing, especially with this first quarter moon in Virgo happening June 7th at the marker of Vestalia. So, how can you cleanse your space, cleanse what is around you and know that it also contributes to this inner cleansing because what you do on the outside is going to affect what's on the inside. Oh, I love this. Yes, you definitely want to know where you have Vesta. To have Vesta conjunct your moon, that is very much a part of your soul path because our moon is our medicine. Our moon is our soul tribe. It is what we're already typically good at. And then if you can combine your moon placement with your south node and north node, usually moon plus south node gives you a really uh, strong combination of the energies that you really came in being good at already. And then to have Vesta with your moon, that's showing, oh, that's part of the story. Like you've probably been a priestess in a past life. And I do find that people who have strong Vesta in their chart really resonate with the priest or priestess energy. Um, in as a priest, it would be in service to the feminine or in service to the to the divine feminine. It's really interesting with the Vestalia um, festivals back in the day, a couple thousand years ago, and this was happening more often. I think it's still happening, but it was more like the full collective would do it all together. It would be a time where offerings would be made to, to the Vestal virgins by women only, which is really interesting and rare, right? Because we tend to have certain festivals and rituals where it's men only, or women are excluded if they're on their menstrual cycle, things like that. So to have, um, have a festival where it's for women by women is, I think, a very important part of this. So whether you, wherever you identify um, in your gender or whether you feel like you're going through a more masculine or feminine or yang or yin cycle, just knowing that right now there's a really strong calling to listen to the voice of the feminine. Um, and actually, I think that will help balance things out because we're still in Gemini season. And Gemini season is about polarity and duality. Um, so that includes the core duality of masculine feminine. What's in the center of that? Um, how are you able to hold both and, or even if you're really used to living hardcore on the masculine side, um, say in, in how you do your business or how you do your work, like it's all about productivity. It's all about making schedules and making sure that you're efforting <laughs> and using your mind, um, et cetera, et cetera. Is there maybe an opportunity at this time to soften and, and allow yourself to receive guidance or to receive intuition? That would be perhaps bringing a balance between masculine and feminine or vice versa. So just having an awareness of that. Okay. Um, with the Palace Athene conjunct Uranus 
June 6th, and then the Venus conjunct Uranus, June 11th. These are two important points because they're happening at 16 degrees. And this is also within two degrees of where Uranus is going to conjoin the North Node over the summer. So Ju July 31st, August 1st, there's going to be a North Node, Uranus, Mars conjunction. And so it almost feels like to me, like right now where Uranus is the liberator, the change maker, and he's coming together with Pallas Athene, goddess asteroid of creative intelligence, and Venus, the, the, the core goddess, the central goddess that we work with in, in astrology, um, and then sort of the lover warrior energy of, of Venus. So Uranus is going to work with them first. Uranus is going to bring that liberating force, almost bring the, the, um, the individuated unconscious energy that's ready to liberate us first through the feminine, through what we're creating, through what we're allowing ourselves to receive, through our values, through our priorities. These are the themes that are at play here. And then in a couple months, when we have the Mars conjunction with Uranus and the North Node, then we're going to work with the masculine. We're going to liberate the divine masculine. So this will just be interesting to observe and see how it plays out both collectively and in your personal life. And I'm, I'm feeling overly, overall um, optimistic, but, but cautiously optimistic. It feels very much like a time to protect our energy, to protect our space, and, and to really focus on serving where it is effectual. It's kind of like, this is something that's come up for me, and this may resonate with you, may not. Um, I used to do social work, and it was really interesting because I got to work with a lot of amazing young people, predominantly teens who were struggling with going to school or were suffering through depression and anxiety, um, anorexia, bulimia, just a whole host of different challenges. And I found that I really enjoyed working with the kids who wanted me there. And so it's, it, it helped me to really, that whole experience, it helped me to discern where I am of highest service. I, I learned very quickly that the people who didn't want me there, the people who didn't want my help, I was probably not really making anything better. Even if I was, maybe I was dropping some seeds along and maybe they flowered eventually, but it was really soul sucking and draining. And I felt like every day I wa walk, would walk away from the people who didn't want my help um, with massive holes punched in my aura, literally almost people punching me <laughs> or trying to steal my stuff. Like it was, it was really wild. I learned a lot about boundaries in that experience. But I do think that that's kind of the same as a healer, no matter where you are, no matter what field you're in, um, working with the people who want to work with you, working with people who want are asking for what it is that you have and then allowing resonance to pull you together. And so that's pretty much how I work now. And it is, it is like night and day. And it doesn't mean I'm not working with people who don't have a, a huge host of um, different challenges because I, because I do, but it's people who are at the place where they want to make a change at the place where they're willing to try something different, where they're willing to ask for help. So that I think in, when it comes to healing is, is the most important thing. And especially with all of the polarity in the world right now, all of the duality, um, it, it very much feels like there's a, a, a sensitivity to where we are at. And especially if you identify as a healer, light warrior, light worker, rainbow warrior, somebody who's a super conductor of love, right? Or a highly sensitive person or an empath. Um, it feels like a very important time to, to protect your peace and know that by doing that, you're actually going to be able to help more people. You'll be able to help your divine appointments, the people that you're here to serve. And you won't be running around like a, like an out of control healer, just trying to heal everybody, <laughs> but to drain yourself, right? So that I think is a really important message from the goddesses, from the divine feminine for, for this past week and for this week coming ahead. So I hope that serves you. <sighs> okay. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. Um, kind of keeping it short and sweet. And I am always open to any thoughts, responses, reactions, questions, curiosities. And uh, I hope you enjoy this coming Vestalia and the coming first quarter moon in Virgo. And I will see you again next time. Mm-hmm.